Oke, okay. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Welcome back to part two of our topic for cross-cultural understanding about the United Kingdom. Before we have discussed about the concept of legal system in England and Wales, I have introduced you about the area of Scotland, Wales, England, and Northern Ireland as part of the United Kingdom. Um, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahirrabbilalamin. Assalatu wassalamu ala sarafil anbiya wa musalin. Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi rasulillahi ajma'in. Amma ba'du. Faya ibadallah itakullaha haqqa tukatih. Wa la tamutunna illa wantum muslimun. Sadaqallahu azim. Uh, we begin further. Uh, sekarang ini, topik yang akan saya bahas, part 2 ini berkaitan dengan constitution and legal system of the United Kingdom, konstitusi ya, tentang dari United Kingdom. Apa saja yang masuk ke konstitusi dari United Kingdom? Nah, let me share with you my picture. There are screens. Now, this is, uh, I have talked about the Commonwealth and system dari legal atau resmi dan formil yang ada di United Kingdom. Sekarang saya masuk ke konsep tentang United Kingdom Constitution. Apa itu secara konstitusi atau undang-undang yang berlaku di United Kingdom. Okay. I'm sharing this picture with you. United Kingdom Constitution and Government. Uh, this is the picture of the Queen's speech. Nah, ini pidato dari Ratu Inggris. Hmm, the Queen's speech. The constitution of the United Kingdom developed over time and is not written down in one place. It consists of various elements, including statutes, laws made by Parliament, important court cases, and established practices. Key principles of the constitution are the rule of law. Everyone is subject to the laws of the land and the sovereignty of parliament. There are no restrictions on the laws that parliament can pass. Apa maksudnya ini? Coba saya jelaskan. Jadi secara konstitusi dari United Kingdom atau Inggris, ini uh, dikembangkan um, sepanjang waktu dan tidak ditulis dalam satu periode saja in one place jadi tidak tidak uh, tulis sekarang terus selesai enggak konstitusi dari United Kingdom terdiri atas berbagai macam elemen termasuk statuta statuta itu adalah hukum yang dibuat oleh parlemen parlemen nanti kita bahas apa itu parlemen kemudian uh, kasus uh, pengadilan penting terus sidang dan juga uh, praktek-praktek yang establish maksudnya sudah diselenggarakan sejak awal waktu di United Kingdom. The key principles of the constitution, artinya prinsip-prinsip kunci dari konstitusi adalah aturan hukum nah, yang mengatakan bahwa setiap orang menjadi subjek dari hukum yang ada di United Kingdom. Jadi orang-orang baik itu Londoners, Cockney, atau Brummy yang kita sebut di part 1, berarti mereka tunduk di bawah rule of law. And sovereignty of parliament. Ini um, martabat dari parlemen. Uh, tidak ada restriksi uh, on the laws that parliament can pass. Jadi tidak ada batasan uh, hukum yang bisa parlemen setujui. That's what it says. Uh, the monarch, nah kita lihat the monarch. Um, the process of transferring power from the monarch, the queen or king. Ini King John's seal. Um, the process of transferring power from the monarch, the queen or king, to the people began in the 13th century when King John was forced to restrict his power by signing the Magna Carta. Today, the monarch represents the people as head of state, but the real power lies in parliament with the elected representatives of the people. Jadi, proses dari transfer kekuasaan uh, dari monarki, uh, the queen or king ke orang-orang, 
masyarakat, so the people, itu dimulai sejak abad ke-13 ketika King John uh, was forced, dipaksa untuk mundur dari tahtanya dengan menandatangani Magna Carta. Hari ini, kata today, yaitu tahun 1995 seterusnya, uh, the monarch represent the people, jadi monarch ini mewakili orang-orang uh, yang berfungsi sebagai head of state, kepala negara, head of state, tapi kekuasaan yang sebenarnya berada pada parlemen, with the elected representatives of the people. Jadi kekuasaan sebenarnya itu berada di parlemen yang terdiri dari orang-orang yang terpilih uh, untuk berada di dalam parlemen Inggris. Apa itu parlemen? Parlemen is made up of two chambers, the House of Commons and the House of Lords. Each autumn, the monarch goes to Westminster for the state opening of Parliament and reads out a speech which sets out the government's plans for the year ahead. Nah, jadi, ini uh, Parlemen, kita bahasa Indonesia nya adalah Parlemen, terdiri dari dua chambers, uh, ada dua bagian, yaitu House of Commons and House of Lords. Each autumn, jadi setiap autumn, uh, musim gugur, uh, the monarch goes to Westminster for the state opening parliament and reads out a speech. Jadi setiap autumn itu monarch, berarti queen dan juga beberapa uh, monarki pergi ke Westminster untuk a state opening of parliament dan membacakan pidato yang men-setting out rencana-rencana pemerintah for the year ahead. Jadi membacakan pidato apa rencana-rencana pemerintah untuk satu tahun berikutnya. Nah itu the houses of parliament itu tujuannya. Jadi monarch membacakan seperti ini. Nah, so this is great. This is the house of parliament. Look at the picture. This is great. Next to calm water in here. And this is the house of parliament. Actually, yang berada di sini ke kekuasaan sebenarnya yang dari United Kingdom. Yeah. Kalau monarch itu mewakili dari head of state, jadi kepala negara. Sementara kalau parlemen ini, the real power berada di parlemen, dari orang-orang yang duduk di parlemen. So that's so exciting for us to see. Uh, this is the picture. Now I stop share at this point. Uh, now I go back to the Zoom again. Okay. All right. So now I'd like to uh, show you uh, the next one, uh, the, the next picture still about the Constitution. Um, uh, this picture. Okay. All right. So this, this is the picture still of the Constitution and Government of the United Kingdom. See, in this picture, this is the House of Commons. Uh, kalau yang tadi saya tunjukkan atau saya display adalah House of Parliament. Nah, kalau di sini, House of Commons, House of, the House of Commons. Uh, so this is, uh, do you still remember when you watched the movie of Margaret Thatcher? Uh, she was here, the government from bench. And, and then, Salah satunya berdiri di sini, berdiri sebagai speaker. And then, opposition front bench. Now, this is opposition front bench. Di sini, pihak oposisi uh, backbenchers here. And then, we have here the people represent the government. Nah, jadi, sama seperti prinsip yang berlaku di National University English Debating Championship yang menggunakan a system British English debate. Hmm. Yeah, jadi merepresentasi seperti ini. Ini the House of Commons. Apa itu the House of Commons? Nah, kita lihat. The House of Commons uh, has 650 members of parliament who each represent a particular part of the country, a constituency. Hmm. Jadi, Anggota parlemen terdiri atas beberapa konstituensi. Konstituensi sendiri adalah orang-orang yang dipilih uh, merepresentasi um, particular part of the country, bagian tertentu dari negara tersebut. 
General elections are held every five years, so the Prime Minister may call one earlier, and if an MP dies or retires by election is held in her or his constituency. constituency. Uh, members of Parliament win their seats in Parliament by a majority vote or first past the post system. That is, the candidate who wins the most votes becomes the members of Parliament for that constituency. Jadi, uh, pemilihan umum dilaksanakan setiap lima tahun sekali, uh, meskipun Prime Ministernya telah dipilih, uh, may call one earlier, this tahun sebelumnya misalnya. And jika member of Parliament meninggal atau uh, pensiun uh, by election is held, jadi by election itu bisa dilaksanakan untuk uh, mencari konstituensi penggantinya, katanya seperti itu. Kemudian, member of Parliament memenangkan kursi mereka di parlemen dengan suara terbanyak first past the post system jadi sistem uh, first past the postnya sistemnya itu first past pertama kemudian uh, lewat seperti itu ya that is candidate kandidat yang akan duduk di parlemen Inggris who wins the most votes yang mendapatkan uh, vote atau suara terbanyak menjadi um, anggota parlemen untuk konstituensi for that constituency After a general election, the leader of the party which has the most seats in the House of Commons becomes Prime Minister and chooses ministers to be responsible for individual departments. If this include the Chancellor of the Executive, who is responsible for the Treasury, Finance Ministry, the Foreign Secretary, responsible for the Foreign and Commonwealth Office, and the Home Secretary, responsible for domestic affairs. Hmm, this is interesting. Jadi setelah pemilihan umum, pimpinan dari partai yang memiliki suara terbanyak di the House of Commons menjadi Prime Minister, menjadi Perdana Menteri. Jadi karena suara terbanyak di uh, pemilihan umum. Dan memilih para menteri yang bertanggung jawab atas bagian-bagiannya uh, masing-masing. Nah, uh, termasuk seperti Chancellor of the Executive, ini bertanggung jawab kepada Menteri Keuangan. Jadi namanya adalah uh, Chancellor of the Ex Exchequer, the Foreign Secretary, bertanggung jawab kepada Foreign and Commonwealth Office, and the Home Secretary, Sekretaris uh, Umum atau uh, di sana, bertanggung jawab ke dalam hal urusan domestik, yaitu di dalam the United Kingdom. They and a number of other important ministers from the cabinet which advises the Prime Minister. In the House of Commons, they sit on the front bench and the Member of Parliament from the party sit behind them, back benches. Nah, jadi susunannya adalah mereka yang duduk di depan, House of Commons, itu yang menjadi uh, other important ministers, menteri-menteri, kabinet, kabinet yang akan memberikan saran kepada Prime Minister. Dan mereka duduk di Uh, kursi paling depan, sementara yang di belakangnya adalah backbenchers, itu anggota parlemen yang berasal dari partai. Kita lihat lagi gambarnya. This is the picture. Uh, so, so, this is the government front bench, this is the front bench, and this is the backbenchers. Berarti, it belongs to the party. In this party, jadi suara terbanyak. Nah, ini akan ketika mereka berbicara, mereka ke sini, berdiri di sini, memberikan the speech. Uh, Okay, uh, so this is Prime Minister John Major and his wife. I think this dictionary was printed in 1995. Opposition, as can I tell you, opposition. Okay, opposition party sits in a similar arrangement facing them in the house with their leader and her or his shadow cabinet on the front benches. Member of parliaments from smaller parties also sit on the position benches. In the center, the speaker who keeps order during debates. Jadi yang yang speaker ini yang uh, memimpin uh, de debat ya, antara government, uh, House of Commons, and opposition. Now we come to see the House of Lords has around 1,200 members, made up of two archbishops and 24 bishops, hereditary peers and peeresses who have inherited their title and life peers whose titles is only for the lifetime and will not pass to their children. 
Jadi ada House of Lords nih orang-orang penting, orang-orang istimewa di United Kingdom. Jadi di atas 1.200 anggota. Kemudian terdiri atas dua Archbishop dan 24 Bishop. Ya, jadi ada yang mendapatkan hereditary yaitu turunan dari keluarga, kemudian uh, peerages dari uh, kerabatnya, uh, kemudian life peers, um, tapi yang mendapatkan gelarnya uh, cuma tidak bisa diturunkan ke anak atau seperti ini. And will not pass to their children. This is interesting. The House of Common. So, now you see the constitution of the United Kingdom. I stop share here. Jadi kita sekarang sudah melihat konstitusi dari the United Kingdom. Ada sistem yang membahas tentang konstitusi yang berlaku di United Kingdom and then format of the legal justice. Ada posisi queen, the queen in the middle of the leaders of the Commonwealth countries. Fungsinya untuk membela ternyata tujuan yang baik dan benar. So that's the one thing that we need to appreciate. Now, uh, I'd like to come to the next uh, slides. I'd like to show you about... Um, okay, this one. Um, UK Arts and Culture. I'd like to show you this one first. This is from the National Geographic. I took it from this website. Uh, it's still being loaded. Nationalgeographic.com. Uh, this website was actually intended to be broadcasted to kids, so children. Uh, therefore, I hope that there should be no adult images. And I'd like to show you this one information about the United Kingdom. This is valid because this information was published in nationalgeographic.com. Jadi dipublikasikan di uh, channel National Geographic about the UK. Hold on, I'm still waiting. Uh, National Geographic Kids. Okay, mm, this is good. See? This is Westminster Abbey, is a historic church in London. Nah, ini salah satu bentuk dari Westminster Abbey, uh, historic church. Church ini berarti gereja ya, untuk agama uh, Kristen. I don't know whether it is Catholic or Protestant. I think it's, I think it's Catholic. Um, Westminster Abbey, but if I'm wrong, please let me know by writing the comment in this section. Um, and then we have what's next okay wow this is the queen elizabeth and prince philip this is prince philips and this uh, lady is uh, queen elizabeth right in a carriage in the united kingdom so this is called carriage uh, i don't know who these people are this one queen elizabeth and Prince Philip of the United Kingdom. Um, next one is, wow, this is Great Britain's rock mountains like the Scottish Highlands of a habitat that is relatively untouched by humans. Jadi, ini area yang belum terjamah oleh uh, manusia. Oh, it reminds me to the movie of Big Friendly Giants. It was here, <laughs> Big Friendly Giant. Still remember that movie? Did, have you watched the movie? I like it. Um, next one, what do we have? Rugby was invented in Britain. Hmm. Jadi permainan rugby ini ditemukan di Britannia. Ya. Okay. Now let's see, United Kingdom, also called the UK, consists of a group of islands off the northwest coast of Europe. Mm -hmm. This is the first facts. Official name, United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland. So, jadi ini nama Inggris itu, uh, kalau Inggris, England bagian dari United Kingdom. Jadi United Kingdom bukan Inggris, tapi Inggris bagian dari United Kingdom. Nah, namanya sebenarnya adalah United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland. 
Untuk pemerintah adalah constitutional monarchy with parliamentary government. So, jadi sudah saya bahas, saya jelaskan barusan tadi. Kemudian the capital city is London. Population 65.105.246 orang. 65 million 105.246 people. Official language is of course English. Money is pound sterling. Area is 93,635 square miles. In records, 240,514 square kilometers with major rivers with same seven and teen. I don't know how to pronounce this. Teen or time? Teen, I think it's teen. So this is the geography I have explained to you before. This is Atlantic Ocean, United Kingdom, North Sea, and this is the picture. Celtic Sea, London, Netherlands, and uh, Belgium. So part of the Europe, but I think um, United Kingdom. This is the United Kingdom, British. Um, the United Kingdom, also called the UK, consists of a group of islands off the northwest coast of Europe. Um, it is a unique country made up of four nations, England, Wales, Scotland, and Northern uh, Ireland. England, Wales, and Scotland also make up Great Britain. Jadi United Kingdom juga disebut sebagai UK, terdiri atas beberapa perkumpulan pulau-pulau di sebelah um, utara barat, ya, seperti sebelah utara, jadi dari Eropa. Negara yang unik terdiri atas four nation, empat kebangsaan, yaitu Inggris, Wales, Scotland, dan Northern Ireland. Inggris, Wales, dan Scotland also make up Great Britain. Ya, jadi tiga ini yang menjadikan uh, Great Britain. Sementara yang menjadikan United Kingdom adalah empat. Uh, England, Wales, Scotland, Northern Ireland. But Great Britain consists of three. What are they? England, Scotland, and Northern Ireland. England, Wales, and Scotland. Sorry. Much of the north and west of the UK is covered in high ground, knife-edge mountains, ridges separated by deep valleys. This terrain was shaped in the last ice age, which, when thick glaciers covered the land. Jadi, kebanyakan daerah utara dan barat dari UK itu tertutup oleh dataran tinggi. Knife-edge mountain ini maksudnya puncaknya seperti uh, pisau yang tajam, ujung pisau yang terbelah, terpisah oleh deep valleys, oleh ngare-ngare yang dalam. Uh, this terrain uh, ini terbentuk pada zaman es, uh, yaitu thick glaciers pada waktu itu tertutup oleh es yang sangat tebal. In the south of England, jadi bagian selatan dari Inggris, the countryside is mostly rolling hills. Nah, jadi kalau di sebelah selatan dari Inggris tersebut, berarti sebelah selatan dari Inggris, yaitu di sini, ini selatan, so ini katanya mostly rolling hills, ini bukit-bukit rolling yang banyak. In the northwest England and Scottish Highlands, northwest di sini, yeah, dozens of lakes called Loch. Oh, that's why ada istilah Loch Ness. They were left behind when the ice age glaciers melted. They tend to be long and narrow, and some are very deep. Legends say that a giant monster called Nessie lives in Loch Ness, in Scotland, Nessie. Wow, this is a nice story. I bet that you need to read the story about this Loch Ness. Wow, this is the picture, Scottish Highlands. Mm. What about the people and culture of the UK? The British are the creation of waves of invaders and migrants, including Shelt, Romans, Anglo-Saxons, Vikings, and Normans. In the 1950s and 1960s, people from former colonies in the Caribbean, Africa, and Asia came to the United Kingdom to work. Sports and literature are among the United Kingdom's culture came claims to fame. Soccer, rugby, cricket, boxing, and golf were all invented in Britain, and the UK has produced many great writers, including William Shakespeare, Charles Dickens, and Robert Burns, J.K. Rowling, the writer of the Harry Potter books, is British. Hmm. Ini untuk orang-orang dan budayanya. Ini bisa kita pahami ya, ternyata tahun 1950 dan 1960-an, orang-orang dari koloninya 
yaitu Karibia, Afrika, dan Asia masuk ke United Kingdom untuk bekerja, to work. Jadi orang yang ada di United Kingdom itu tidak hanya uh, seperti yang kita lihat, mereka juga berasal dari Karibia, Afrika, dan Asia. So, so that's not, so does it mean that uh, it is only white? So, I don't know, you, you may decide from this information. The nature, about 5,000 years ago, the center of the United Kingdom was covered with thick forests. Thousands of years ago, these woodlands were cleared by ancient farmers, and today only about 10% of the land is forest. The United Kingdom's complex geology gives rise to a wide variety of landscape and a range of habitats from for its animal and plant life, but it is a very crowded country and there are not many truly wild places left. The most successful wildlife spaces are those that can live alongside people. 5,000 tahun yang lalu, ternyata pusat dari Inggris tertutup oleh uh, hutan yang sangat tebal katanya. Jadi ribuan tahun yang lalu, area per, uh, woodlands ini berarti area yang tertutup oleh kayu-kayu, pohon-pohon. Ini dibersihkan oleh uh, para ancient farmers, para petani yang zaman lampau. Dan hari ini hanya 10% dari daratan tersebut adalah hutan. So only 10%. Secara geologi, Inggris United Kingdom memiliki uh, kompleks ya, gives rise to wide variety of landscapes. Jadi sangat kompleks secara geologi. Kemudian untuk wildlife-nya ini uh, bisa itu yang bisa ber, hidup ber, berkesinambungan dengan manusia alongside people. Great Britain's rock mountains like the Scottish Highlands offer habitat that is relatively untouched by humans. Jadi uh, area Rock Mountains seperti Scottish Highlands ini adalah area yang belum dijamah oleh manusia. Uh, areanya 7.700 mil atau 12.429 km dari shoreline ranging yaitu berawal dari tall cliffs to beaches to marshes. Jadi dari pergunungan sampai ke daerah pantai, kemudian daerah pasir. Also provide homes for wildlife such as seabirds and seals. Jadi bisa menjadi tempat atau rumah yang sangat bagus bagi seabirds, burung-burung laut, dan juga anjing laut, seals. This is the flag and this is the coins. British pound sterling uh, with coins and this is uh, British flag. What about the government? Uh, yeah, I think I have found this. Uh, explained to you, the government is monarchy, constitutional monarchy, The economy, uh, nih, ternyata United Kingdom ini menjadi bangsa yang berkuasa dalam perdagangan lebih dari 500 tahun. Di abad ke-19, industri Inggris membantu banyak negara-negara um, help make the country. Jadi membuat United Kingdom tersebut menjadi negara yang sangat powerful di dunia. Dan sampai hari ini masih menjadi ekonomi terkuat di bumi ya itu katanya. Nah, sejarahnya, this is the history. Uh, you may go on. Okay. The first Britons, orang Briton pertama yang tinggal di, di United Kingdom, yaitu dikenal dengan istilah the Picts yang sampai pada 10.000 tahun yang lalu. Jadi in the 18th century BC, the Celts arrived from Europe and pushed the Picts north into Scotland. In AD 43, jadi AD 343, the Romans invaded and ruled for nearly 400 years. They built roads, bathhouses, sewers, and large villas. Yeah. The Angles, nah ini sejarahnya, you may go on and read that. Uh, the 6th century, German peoples known as Angles, Jews, and Saxons were moving to Britain. Mm, yeah. Jadi ada pada abad 900 ke, tahun 900 ke 1400, England dikuasai oleh Viking, Danish, dan juga uh, invaders, Norman invaders, maksudnya para pendatang menginvade ke Inggris. Tahun 1485, Welsh noble Henry Tudor claimed uh, English crown dan menjadi Henry VI, Henry VII. The first of the five Tudor monarchy berawal dari di sini. The Picts, kemudian abad ke-18, the Shelf masuk ke Eropa dan push the pigs north into Scotland. Jadi uh, pigs the north into Scotland. Uh, 
Nah, terus dari Roma, orang-orang Roma, Jerman, kemudian ada Norman, Danish, Danish and then Denmark, Viking, Danish, and then several important lines, lines of kings, queens followed. Nah, sejak tahun 1800, Britain was one of the most powerful nation. Jadi Britain ini salah satu negara yang berkuasa di dunia. Perdagangan generated immense wealth and the country built a huge overseas empire. But the early 20th century was a time of setbacks for Britain. Drained by World War II, one and two, Britain could no longer afford its empire, and most of its colonies became independent. Nah, ini uh, 1800 ya. Ini powerful nation. Okay. Wow, this is great. Drained, nah, tapi kata begini, tahun 1800-an, Britain menjadi negara yang sangat powerful di dunia. Um, perdagangan mereka mendapatkan um, menciptakan kekayaan yang sangat luar biasa bagi Britain dan negara tersebut membangun um, kekuasaan overseas yang sangat um, besar ya sangat luas. Tapi di awal abad ke-20 adalah waktu setbacks for Britain. Mundur, mundur ya. Jadi setbacks for Britain drain. Jadi banyak kerugian atas uh, perang dunia 1 dan perang dunia kedua. Britain could no longer afford its empire. Jadi Britain tidak lagi sanggup untuk mempertahankan kerajaannya, empire, kemudian most of its colonies, ini kebanyakan negara-negara koloninya menjadi negara independen. So, so that's the history. Jadi tidak ada lagi colonization. No, there is no more colonization. So it's very exciting to know all about this. I stop share. Now I go back to my Zoom. So student, you have listened and you have learned much about the United Kingdom from my explanation. For this part two, um, I, I did not talk much about the religious aspect of being a Muslim in the United Kingdom because you have found the statement about the people in the UK is that it, uh, it came from the Caribbean, Africa and Asia which means that, that the history of the people coming to the UK, uh, not only Christians, not only Jewish, not only Muslims. So the UK, United Kingdom can uh, be built with this diverse people. And of course, when we see the United Kingdom today at present, it's different from the way we see it was uh, in hundreds of years ago. Long time ago, the United Kingdom was kingdom, and it was ruled by the king and queen, as you can see in the wars or in the Narnia movie <laughs> for kids. And so many interesting facts and stories that you can learn. But the point is that the United Kingdom is a country that consists of uh, four um, islands, four areas of nation, England, Wales, Scotland, and Northern Ireland. And then I have shared with you the concept. So the question, the question for the students for me to ask for our next meeting about the UK is that you make your video about the United Kingdom and I'm going to share it to YouTube. So I would like to share with the world how Indonesian Muslim students talk about the United Kingdom. Silahkan anda buat videonya tentang United Kingdom, and please share it with me to my emails. I'm going to be happy to share it to the world. All right, so I conclude that the United Kingdom is an English-speaking country located near to the northwest of the Europe. It has pound sterling as its money. It uses English as the first, as the most important language in the country, and it has uh, four main uh, nations, England, Wales, Scotland, and Northern Ireland. And it is exciting place to be visited um, because the United Kingdom has a British accent. Okay, I hope that you enjoy my explanation for my students and for those of you people who watch this video, I thank you very much again. And until then, may God bless you. Please stay safe and please be healthy during this mental illness week. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. God bless you.